Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. First, I want to start off this video by like a little update. If you want to skip straight to the keyframing tutorial, the time code will be on screen right now. So just if you're impatient, you know, you can go you can go right there. I've been thinking a lot lately about what the type of content I want to be putting out. I really want to start upping the quality a lot on my videos. I did a poll on Twitter the other day just out of curiosity. And it was quality versus quantity. And the overwhelming majority said quality. And I am starting to agree. Obviously you need to keep uploading, you know, to learn as you grow as well. But I really want to start focusing a lot more on quality now. This is going to be a new show every Friday called Flamin' Fridays, spelled with a Z because I'm 12. <laughs> I'm super excited because Flamin' Fridays is going to be for tutorial type videos as well as maybe tech reviews. I want to start getting into those because that's something I'm also very interested in. And if I can integrate that into my channel, why not? More vlog type content, sort of sharing whatever I've learned in the past week when it comes to editing, cinematography, whatever, that type of stuff. And then on Tuesdays, I want to start focusing on making videos that are more reliant on storytelling and integrate a lot of cinematography and tell a great story every Tuesday. So yeah, I'm super excited and if you guys are excited, let me know in the comments. So today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys a little bit of masking. I actually made an intro again for Tech Tuesday because Dan tweeted out asking for people to send in some submissions not asking but suggesting that people could send in submissions and I was like this is pretty perfect for me I'm gonna do this obviously in that process there is a lot of keyframe but it's pretty similar to my Dan Mace intro video so for everyone who's asking for a more in-depth um, process of that intro this will be very similar techniques that you can apply to that one as well. So let's get right into it. I'm looking at my computer right now and I'm gonna go through this process with you all. In case you missed it, here is the intro I made for Casey's 368 Tech Review Tuesday series. Did you get a chance to shoot the intro to Tech Tuesday? <laughs> I tweeted at him if you guys want to go help support it and get his and make sure Casey or Dan see it you can head over to my Twitter and like my tweet retweet it I don't know anything helps if you want to so if you go into effects you can see here on the left there are a ton of keyframes they, this is the area you need to pay attention to if you want to do keyframes. I'm just going to delete all of them and we can redo it. When the stopwatch icon is not blue, that means that whatever settings you have set for that image or whatever is going to be applied throughout the entire clip. So right now the camera is down here, it's very tiny, but these are the like settings it's set at so the entire time it will just be sit it's just gonna sit there because there's nothing happening there's no other keyframes but I want to make it sort of like fly into frame if that makes sense like it was before so let's go back to the start of this clip and I'm going to set the keyframes so that it will start really tiny here in the corner I'm setting the position scale and rotation because those are the three things I'm going to be changing so now that I've set the first keyframe you can tell because they popped up here on the left I'm gonna go over one frame forwards one frame and I'm going to change some of the stuff so you can change the scale by adjusting here by just sliding here or you can manually like input a number if you want. Once you change something on the next frame over, you'll see a new little diamond appear and that means that it's set a new keyframe. But you have to go through for each one and sort of, you know, move it to wherever you want and it automatically sets a new keyframe for you. You don't have to go through and click these little buttons here to set them. They'll kind of just do it themselves. I'm also going to change the rotation a little bit because I want it to sort of like turn into frame, if that makes sense. So now if you go back to the first one, see it's tiny, and it gets a little bit bigger, and then go over one more frame, change it however you want. As you can see, this is sort of the process for this. It takes kind of, it takes some time. Keyframing doesn't take five seconds. There are other programs you can use to do similar things like After Effects. In my Dan Mace video, there were a ton of people who were like, why don't we just use After Effects? That's a great question. Um, 
I think because I'm more comfortable with Premiere, I was just like, I'm gonna try and figure it out on this program first. I learned how to do something a little bit more complicated in Premiere instead of just going to After Effects. But, you know, it's a lot more convenient at the end of the day and a lot faster. Um, but the truth is, I don't really know too much about After Effects and I, that's definitely something I need to learn. So it's on my list of things to do. We're starting to get a little bit of progression here. You can control every single step. I also sort of like the glitchiness that keyframing has. I think it makes it, it has this cool vibe to it. I don't know how to explain it. And I also, you know, thought it went along with Dan's style, who is sort of, Dan and Casey's style is kind of, you know, rustic vibe if that makes sense and Dan also kind of does like technically it is for Casey's video so I wanted to incorporate a little bit of his style into it. You can see all the new keyframes that I've made um, making this over here on the left um, and if you go back you can see all the progression and how all the numbers are changing over there and yeah keyframing can be time consuming but it's so easy to manipulate and you can create some pretty cool stuff with it. Also, if you are if you want, you can go in manually change keyframes or delete them by just going into here and clicking on them. Say you want to offset a keyframe by a couple frames or something, a couple seconds, you can always select them and actually move them all around. That's sort of keyframing in a nutshell. I hope you guys found that useful if you are maybe new to keyframing or you've never tried it before and you want to try it out. I hope this encourages you to just give it a go and try it out and see how you like it because you can make some pretty cool things with keyframing. I hope you guys are excited for this new series and for my plan for this channel. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment below letting me know what you would like me to do a sort of mini tutorial on. Maybe one day I'll get like a cool sign or something that says Flamin' Fridays and put it in the background. Like, I don't know. And I will see you next Tuesday with another new video. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,